The whole idea sprang up when we found this beautiful hillside plot of land with a truly magnificent view stretching out and decided to build a house there. This house was supposed to be a frame for the landscape and just that. Also, it would be best if it was one story. However, my wife opposed the idea of a one story house, it was all about providing a sense of security. And it was then when I thought to myself, OK, but what if I slightly twisted this ground floor away from the slope so that only one corner of the house was in a direct contact with the slope? Then the remaining part of the house, accommodating the bedrooms, would become an actual first floor. In order for the house not to stop the rainwater flowing down the slope, I would have to build it on the walls, meaning the house would be turned into a bridge. The house was covered with a gable roof without an eave. Actually, the building itself became one giant eave. Snow will not block neither the entrance nor the windows, as it will fall even lower. The only thing left was to close the building from the bottom, as a construction resting on three walls needed to be tied. An idea came up to literally turn the roof upside down. It looked quite funny at first, but when I asked to undercut the end walls, all began to look really good. It has provided even greater security, simply because the undercut walls even prevent leaning a ladder against them. And so we basically created a house with two roofs that protect it from water. However, the top one necessarily needs to be watertight, and the bottom one has to be, in a sense, holy to allow water flow under the building. When we saw the final effect, we started associating it with some boat, the ark. It was consequential. I had that idea for a long time on my mind to use structural concrete, for the house construction as the actual facade of the building and to introduce thermal insulation inside. The terraces that can be seen all around stem directly from my initial concept. Usually we would need to insulate the building and then finish it off by adding successive layers, while here the joining of the facade with the horizontal plate was already the finishing of the building. The roof was covered by a TPO membrane, in fact everyone thinks it's a concrete, and it was exactly the idea. When we entered the building shell stage, the building needed to be thermally insulated on the inside. The optimal solution proved to be spray polyurethane foam that both provides excellent insulation and is a vapor barrier. We used a closed cell structure type of foam. The house is very warm and the foam constitutes an element of interior design. It looks quite interesting and striking. One of the most important elements of this building is an outstanding view – glass. It was important that the glass was not dimming and that the interior did not warm up. We found glass panes characterized by such properties that we investigated. We would observe the landscape from the perspective of the interior and then how the glass combines and corresponds with the concrete on the outside. To be fully successful it takes selecting a window frame whose thickness does not obstruct the view. We went for one of the latest aluminium systems, but even that very good system needed to be slightly adapted to meet the needs of the ark. The window frames designed to make it possible to hide them in the floor or ceiling, but in some places where there is most vulnerability to really extreme weather conditions, the frames were installed a bit higher above to confront the first thrust of water. One corner of the twisted ground floor comes in contact with the hillside surface, but there is still a difference of 70 centimeters in height. Initially, I thought of designing some steps, but it would have been too inconvenient. 
And secondly, I wanted to introduce some shutter or partition in this side anyway, which would close the house. And then an idea came to me that it would be best to combine the two functions, hence the drawbridge. We restored the solutions from the safe house. We open the house, we go outside, in fact, we are in the middle of a pasture. And so the garden is really all that surrounds us. It was exactly what I came to realize at some point. The garden is an integral part of the man, and the house itself looks as if it flowed along the hill slope, with plenty of animals all around. I was wondering what kind of fence to have, and suddenly, Eureka! Looking around, I once noticed that there were plenty of herding fences, and so similarly, the ark is surrounded by such fence. When we want the horses to mow the grass, the electric fence disappears, and horses freely approach the ark. The soffit area at the bottom of the building was adapted as basement space. And in order to comfortably get inside and sometimes enter the space with the lawn mower, since the horses do not always mow the grass entirely, there has been a second drawbridge implemented. It is released down to the ground by means of an acutator, as it is quite heavy, to make it possible for a lone mower, which also waits a little, to easily enter the place. Speaking of designing, or rather lack of designing, the surroundings, there is nothing natural about scattering illumination somewhere in the pasture. So I came up with this idea that the inclined bottom soffit of the arc could form a perfect reflector surface, and so the arc becomes a lamp illuminating the surrounding area. When we went on holiday and there was no fence, the horses stayed there overnight. They lined up under the building, soffit and standing there in a single file, they treaded all the grass. But the cool thing is that these horses came and all these animals are attracted to this house because it is a kind of a refuge in the middle of the meadow. The wind does not blow, the rain does not pour. It once happened that the fox brought its prey and tried to bury it here. Somewhere in the area there are sheep grazing. And by the way, the name Ark, unthinkable when it was designed, perfectly integrated with the landscape and the whole animal story which takes place here.